Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and on today's DIY Wednesday video, we are going to make some very quick, some very easy, and some very affordable last minute Christmas gifts. Okay, so picture it. It's Wednesday, December 20th. You just got home from work and you were told at work that, oh, we're having a holiday party and we're doing a gift exchange. Everybody draw names. Or worse, your neighbor comes over and drops off a gift and you have nothing for them. So you make up some ridiculous story about how you haven't even wrapped all your gifts yet, but don't worry, you have something for them because how could you forget your neighbor? As soon as you get it wrapped, you'll walk it on over. Or you get a call from your mom and she's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, it's kind of last minute, but Jimmy's bringing and his girlfriend that he's known for like two weeks and she's coming to Christmas this year. Jimmy said that she got all of us something, so just a heads up, you might wanna get her a little something. And you're like, well, shit, it's like five days before Christmas. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Well, don't you worry, because you know your girl Sherry, she's got your back. I have got three very good gift ideas that you will be able to whip up in a snap. And it's gonna be gifts that they want. Because you know, sometimes, you know, when you stumble across these types of videos in the YouTubes, they're like, yeah, cheap and easy Christmas gifts. And then you look at them and you're like, yeah, nobody wants that. And I don't wanna take the time to make it and give it to somebody because I would be embarrassed. I would be embarrassed if I gave that to somebody. So yeah, trust me when I say that any one of these gifts are going to make the perfect Christmas gift for the coworker, the neighbor, the unexpected girlfriend, you name it, these are gonna be the perfect gifts. But before we get into that, let me just remind you, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And you know you're gonna like this video, so you might as well just pause it right now and give it a thumbs up for me. And then also, make sure you leave me a comment down below. All right, now, what are we going to make today? I'll tell ya. So one of the very affordable, quick and easy Christmas gifts happens to be from, you know, our favorite Christmas store ever, the Kirklands. Now, I was perusing their website and I came across these Merry Christmas Santa Claus wood crates set of two. Yay! Pretty cute, right? Yeah. Those are wooden crates that are painted and they have a stencil on them and they have wooden handles. That's cute. I'm sure they're not that expensive. Well, they were originally $54.99 for the set. They are on sale now for $38.49. Yeah, they're wooden crates that are painted with like Merry Christmas on one and Santa Claus on the other. I know, right? How easy is that? Wooden crates are pretty readily available. I happened to pick mine up at the Joann's. I used a coupon and I also think they were on sale, but I'll have to get my receipt. This could be a great option for a last minute Christmas gift. And I was thinking, yes, you could give both to one person or you could divide them up and give one to one person and one to another person. You could also, if you wanted to go over and above, maybe get like a Christmas tree, you know, one of those little Christmas trees and put it inside the box, fill it with candy. I don't know, but they're cute. So we're gonna make them today. The next thing we are going to make are these really super cute block letters wrapped in yarn or twine. Now, Stacy sent me a picture of this and I just thought this was so adorable. And I was perusing the onlines and a lot of them are actually just made out of cardboard. People, you know, got their Amazon box, drew a block letter out and then cut that out. So the letter is very flat. But we're not gonna do that. We are actually going to make our letters out of those like 3D, you know, you see them all the time. They're very readily available at the craft stores. Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, what have you. So we are gonna take those and wrap them in Dollar Tree yarn and then put a little holiday embellishment on it. That is affordable, easy, and quick holiday gift number two. And the third holiday gift that we are going to make is a hand knit chunky poof pillow. 
I know. So if you are a fan of the hand knit chunky blankets that we made like last DIY Wednesday, this is a really good pairing or to just give on its own. And I'm telling you, you could bust this pillow out in less than an hour and it's probably gonna cost you 10 bucks total. So yay, let's get to work. All right, so let's start with super affordable, super quick, super easy holiday gift number one, which is our yarn wrapped letters. I picked like the person's last name, so like more of a monogram letter. Paper mache letter by Fab Lab Craft are originally $5.99, but I had a coupon, so each letter cost me $4.79. Then the Joann's was also having like a really good deal on their holiday picks, but you know, you can get these at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. This was like 70% off, so it was actually cheaper for me to get it at the Joann's on sale than it was for me to get at the Dollar Tree. This beautiful little golden goddess here was regularly $3.99. I got it for 96 cents. And then this guy right here, Little Winter Wonderland, was regularly $2.99 and I got it for 72 cents. But even if you paid full price, six plus three is nine, and then you go over to your Dollar Tree, and I grabbed two yarn balls just because I wasn't sure how many yarn balls it was going to take, but $1.25 and $1.25. I wanna do one in yarn, and then I also bought the Dollar Tree Crafter Square Natural Jute Cord because I wanna do another one in this. So another $1.25. And all you're gonna need, aside from this, is a pair of scissors and your hot glue gun. That's it, that's it. I told you guys it was gonna be super easy and super quick. Now, depending on your style of letter, I want mine to be more like a holiday decoration that someone could set on the counter. But if you wanted to, at the end of it all, do like two dots of hot glue with like a yarn loop and be able to hang it on the wall. Now, if you are going to hang it on the wall, you're going to want to make sure the bottom of your letter is also covered in yarn. But because I want this to be able to sit flush, I am going to leave the bottom of my letter just the craft foam, and then I'll wrap every other part of the letter in the yarn. So depending on your letter, you might have to do some strategic yarn planning. So for this N, what I wanna do is get my sides and top and the inner portion covered. So I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna go from bottom with one strip of yarn up, around, and down. And I'm gonna do that for this whole side here. And then for this side, I'm gonna go up, around, and down. That will cover my sides and my top. Again, I'm leaving my bottom blank so that it could sit nicely on a flat surface. Then what you have to figure out is where does your letter connect and how do you want the wrap to go? So once I wrap the sides and the top and down this side, I'm actually going to work on my straight parts first. Because if we wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap, we're gonna get up to this section here where we're gonna do a little wrap, jig, jag, back, wrap, jig, jag, back. We're gonna have some loops here and here. Then for this part, the way we're gonna cover up those loop backs is by wrapping this section vertically and it's gonna cover that up. The sides are gonna go like this and then the middle's gonna go like this. So depending on your letter, map out how you are going to want your yarn to go. Now when it comes to this portion, we're gonna do a little trickery and do kind of like a half wrap and come back around this side and then half wrap and come back around this side. So we're gonna do a little snake when it gets to this bulky part of the end. So I need to cover the tops with yarn and you wanna try to keep your glue to a minimum. I am going to take a little piece of yarn and I wanna put a little glue dot here on the side, reach this around and put another little glue dot on this side, nothing on the top 
little glue, little glue. Just put your little tail in that side, get it as close to the edge as you can, and just hold it there for a quick second until that glue's dry. Then you don't have to cut your yarn because we're just gonna go back up and over this way, keeping our glue dots to a minimum and very, very, very light touch of a glue. But these pieces up against each other so there are no gaps and just keep snaking this back and forth, back and forth. Little tiny glue dot on the edge, not on the top, but these yarns really close. We don't wanna see any of that cardboard in there. Then just make a little loop-de-loop, -loop, come back up and butt that really close to your other one, like that. Very, very, very easy. So do this to your tops. Okay, yay, tops are done. That is probably gonna be like one of the hardest, most time consuming parts of this entire project. The rest should go pretty smoothly, minus the part where we have to jig jag where our diagonal meets our straight. Now that I know this is my top, I am gonna start from this leg and wind up till here, and then I'm gonna start to jig jag back and forth. Front of my letter, back of my letter. I'm gonna start my glue on the inside back. The good thing about this part is, now you won't have to glue every single time. You can glue a little bit and then wrap, wrap, wrap. Glue a little bit more for a security blanket, wrap, wrap, wrap. I'm gonna put a little tiny baby line of glue and I'm gonna lay that right along that very, very bottom edge. For this first one, I am gonna glue every little corner just because I don't want the yarn to slip off the bottom. So just make sure you're keeping your yarn as very, very close to the bottom, bottom edge as you possibly can. Again, we're trying to avoid seeing any of the craft paper underneath. Pull that yarn tight, wait for that glue to kind of dry a little bit. Pull that yarn, keeping it really, really close to that bottom edge. Kind of press it in place, round that corner. A little more glue dots. And I'm just putting ever so slightly glue to hold that there, round that corner, and then I'm Back to my inside, glue here. Now I'm gonna tuck in my tail of my starter yarn. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little glue right there at that tail, go kind of over my tail, but then hop the curb so that I can start row number two. Wrap, 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 wrap. I don't know, 10 wraps, 20 wraps, whatever you're thinking, put a glue dot every now and again just to hold the yarn in place. We are at the apex of our N. So I wrapped all of this leg. It went very, very quickly. I glued, I don't know, maybe three or four times on the back inside leg. So now I'm at this part. This is where we're gonna need to do what we did at the top, where we are going to need to extend out past this imaginary straight line here, put a little bit of glue, wrap, go around to this side, do that same thing. Jig jag, little snake action, going back and forth, back and forth. Just a hair past this imaginary line here. Put a little glueness here. I'm going into my glue. I'm gonna put my fingernail there, take this back, get it really close, pulling my yarn tight every single time. Take it back this way, go past my imaginary line on this side, put another little bit of glue here, bring this yarn back around, smash it, smash it together with that other one. As long as you're a good amount of space away from your imaginary line, you don't have to take it too far, but you know, about a centimeter, and then just work back and forth and back and forth. Little glue dot, boom, pull tight. Make your quick U-turn, butt up those yarns. Go back this way, get another little glue dot right here. Pull that yarn tight, get it in that glue dot. Make a U-E, come back, hold it tight. Get it back this way, glue dot, boom. Flip a U-E, come back this way. Just make sure you're pulling your yarn really tight and keeping each yarn line butted up against the next yarn line. Just keep going, keep going. Back and forth and back and forth. 
So now I'm at a point in my straight leg that I think I can go back to wrapping around the entire end. Now, because there is a little curve here, I am gonna have to put a glue dot every now and again on this inside. Now I'm gonna go around, 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 around until I get to the very top. When I get to the back, I'm going to put a little glue dot right here and then trim that off on the inside corner, not on the outside corner. What's gonna happen is, is we're gonna start wrapping this way. And so I want where I ended here to be covered by the yarn that is going to go this away. All of those little loop-de-loo U-turns that we made, they are gonna get covered up once we start wrapping the end vertically rather than horizontally. Then I need to do the same thing on this side of the end, and then we can do the middle. Okay. So we are almost done. I have both of my stick legs wrapped and I did the little, you know, zigzag snake action here. So this is what we look like. And now all we have to do is wrap this center portion here. So I'm gonna take this and just take it around. So what I'm gonna wanna do every so often, I'm gonna have to put a glue dot here and here to hold this wrap in place as I make my way down this ramp and then up this ramp. But do you see how cute it's gonna be when everything is in place? We're gonna have our horizontal rows of yarn and then we'll have our vertical rows of yarn. So yeah, that's all you need to do. Pretty easy. interrupt this fast forwarding to let you know that I have aborted the whole vertical things here. That was just becoming a pain in the ass and it was taking way too long. And this is supposed to be quick and easy. So I just decided instead of making all of the yarn lines look very linear and precise, that I'm just trying to wrap this end as best as possible, cover all the boards. So I went around this section, you can see is a little thicker. I'm gonna have to go around these sticks one more time to give them like two layers. So ends, the letter ends, M's probably same, they suck. So just wrap them the best you can to cover all of the cardboard looking stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. And had I realized that initially, I wouldn't have done all this snaking back and forth either. I would have just wrapped it because what happened here is I just kept wrapping, wrapping, wrapping as far as I could go to the point. And then I started wrapping this way. And now I'm back here and I'm just gonna wrap all of this around again. I also probably could have gotten away with one ball of Dollar Tree yarn. But since I wasted a lot of yarn doing all this rigmarole, now I'm on my second one. So learn from my mistakes. If you've got a hard letter like this, just wrap it. Wrap it the best you can. Because putting a glue dot everywhere and trying to get that all lined up, no, no, don't do that. Just wrap it. Okay, yay, I finally wrapped the entire end and it looks good. Willy nilly wrapping, I mean, I did my best to keep them in like okay kind of rows. They're not really perfect, but it does look really good. So I am happy with that. And let me tell you, willy nilly wrapping, way quicker. I barely even put any glue dots around and it looks really, really good. So the last step is to take our accoutrement and embellish it. See how cute? I don't wanna just like cut this here and then like smack it on, even though I totally could. So I think what I will do is take it apart and then I'm just going to, you know, hot glue it. Arrange this cute, you know, hide that little brown part or maybe even just cut it off entirely. So yeah, you get the gist. I'm just gonna arrange this all cutesy in the corner here and then we'll be done. Okay, yay, and just like that, for about $10 and a little, now I'm gonna go with about an hour and a half, you can create this gorgeous holiday gift 
to give to coworker, neighbor, friend, family member, whoever. Super, super, super cute. And look. I did the C out of the twine from the Dollar Tree. Now the C took me much less time to wrap. If it's a hard letter, give yourself two hours. If it's an easier letter, about an hour and an hour and a half. The difference with the yarn and the twine, what one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. So moving right along, let's get into affordable, quick and easy Christmas gift number Two. All you're gonna need for this is one skein of, you know, that thick yarn. And because Stacy recommended it for the blanket, the Yarn Bee yarn. Now it is regularly $7.99, but you can use a coupon and save, you know, 20 to 40% off. But even at the full price of $7.99, this gift is going to be very affordable. So you need your yarn, you're gonna need some polyfill. Now, you could probably get two of these pillows out of one of these 12 ounce bags of polyfill. This is the premium polyester fiber fill, $3.57. So, we're at like 11 bucks if we got nothing on sale. But use a coupon and it'll probably cost you like eight bucks. This is all you need. Oh and a pair of scissors. And your phalanges. So, if you watched the blanket video, you already are way ahead of this. So, you're gonna need your yarn. Polyfill comes later. So, you're gonna want a seven inch tail and you're gonna start exactly how you would start making a blanket. So, you're gonna make a loop and then twist towards you two times, one, two. Then take your working yarn and pull that through. Now, what we wanna make sure is, before we pull anything through, we wanna make this loop and all of the other loops pretty tight. So I wanna make sure my starter loop is like one finger, and then I'm gonna twist one, two, and then pull my working yarn through. I don't want it any bigger than one finger. Now, depending on the size you want your pillow, you wanna do like 15 loops, maybe 18 loops. Now, I'll show you, I already did one. This pillow right here, I mean, look how darling. It's like this big, this is my head. I just have a normal average size head, and this is the pillow. This, I did 15 loops. And all you need is the one skein. So no matter how many loops, you're just gonna use your one skein of yarn. So we have one, our starter guy, two, and now we just keep working that right along, pulling under and up, making loop number three. Go again, under and up, loop number four. And again, I'm trying to keep them fairly tight. Pull again, we've got loop number five, loop number six, loop number seven, loop number eight. You get it, just under and up, loop number 10, Loop number 11, loop number 12, loop number 13. Look how fast we're going. Loop number 14, loop number 15. And go until you have your number of loops, 15, 18, whatever you want. And then we start the next part. Now that you have your 18 loops, what you're gonna do is take your tail and you're gonna take it and thread it through your very last loop to make a circle. And you're just using this as like a placeholder kind of. And then you're gonna take your working yarn and you're gonna start creating your loops through your first loop. You know how to do this if you watch the blanket video. Take your working yarn, pull it through that first loop, and then you'll have your loop that's like sticking up in the air. Now we have to find number two, right there. That's number two. So go up, in, make your loop like so. Then keep going around the circle, keeping track of your loops. There we have next loop. And because it, you're doing your loops pretty tight, it's gonna be a little feeling around, poking your finger through to make sure that you're not missing any of your loops. So just go from the back side, pull forward, push that working yarn through, and pull your loop up like so. 
Once you get all the way around, you're gonna have like this little crown of loops. So you just keep going through, making your crown loops, you know, one finger poke through. You want it pretty tight. Now, if you get loose loops, I'll show you. While this looks great, some of my loops were a little bit bigger and I can see the polyfill through that hole. I don't like that. So I wanna make sure on this one, I'm making it tight and I'm staying tight and consistent throughout. Just poke your little finger through, get your little loopy-doo of your working yarn and pull that through until you've made it all the way around. Since I did 18 in my first chain, you should have 18 of these little loopy guys poking up like a crown when you get back to your tail. Okay, awesome. Now that you have your little mini crown of 18 or however many loops all the way around the edge, you're just gonna keep this like this and you're gonna keep going, making more and more and more and more and more and more loops until your entire skein of yarn is done. So I'm gonna leave it in my circle like I have it. This was my last loop. This is loop number 18. This is my first loop. I'm just gonna take that working yarn and keep going around my circle, not skipping a loop, don't skip a loop. Keep going from behind, pulling up and through and make your little crown, behind, up and through, like that. And then just keep going and going and going and going and going until you have about 10 inches of yarn left on your skein. Okay, so I don't know, I've been maybe doing this for like 10 minutes and here's where we are. I think I about have about half of my skein left. Now, it's going to curl up on you. Just let it do what it's gonna do and just keep making sure that you're going through each and every one of your little baby loops and that you always have the same number around in your circle. So keep going, keep going. So after about 30 minutes or so, you should have something that looks like this and you should have a good amount of tail because you're reaching the end of your skein. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do I know if I reach the end of my circle? So what you wanna do is lay it out kind of flat, even up the bottom, press it flat and match up your loops to double make sure everybody is even. So these two are even, these two are even. I need to finish these four because they're lower than these loops here. So I'm gonna just quickly go one, two, three, four. And then I think all of my loops are matched. So let's just double check. We've got two, 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 two. That looks good. Two, that looks even. Two, 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 and two. So we're all even and we have a good amount left. I could probably go around one more time. I just don't want to. So our next step is we need to close up our bottom. So all you want to do for this is Turn it so the bottom is facing you. This is my tail. It was in my little placeholder area. Gently pull, because if you pull too hard, you could risk breaking your yarn. So you wanna gently pull your tail through, and it, it, takes, it takes a little bit. Pull your tail through until you start to see this hole close up and get tighter. Thread it through the loop next to it, and then gently pull. Thread it through the loop next to it, and I'm just going along the outside and gently pull. And keep doing that until your hole is closed. E Z. I did exactly what I told you not to do. I pulled too hard and I broke it. But that's okay. I'm just gonna tie it back together and then continue. My hole is almost closed up. No worries, no worries. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tie it. No one will ever know. How would they know? They won't know. See, easy. You can fix it, it is fine. 
So now just keep going through. Don't pull tight and close up that hole. Hole is closed. That's where my hole is right there. Here is my tail. We want to shove it through the hole and grab it from the inside of your pillow. So once you have it on the inside, what you're gonna do is tie a couple knots. Just reach on in there, tie a couple knots, and voila, no hole at the bottom. So yay, now we get to stuff it. Get your stuffing and get to stuffing. So for me, I like to take like a chunk of stuffing and kind of break it apart and really fluff it up and then shove it on in. You can do this for as firm or as fluffy as you want your pillow. Just keep shoving it on in, get it in all the nooks and crannies, get it nice and fluffy, shove, 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 shove. Now, as you're pulling, make sure you don't destroy any of your top loops because we still need to close this pillow. So make sure you have all of your crown loops up at the top as you're stuffing your polyfill into your pillow. So we're filled. I filled it kind of tight. You fill it loose, fill it tight, whatever you want. So now we're gonna take our working yarn that's left on our pillow and we're just gonna thread it through our loop. So this is the last loop where my working yarn is. So I'm just gonna take like two loops at a time, kind of put my finger through them and take my end of my working and shimmy it through those two loops. You could do one at a time, two at a time. Maybe I'll just do one at a time. <laughs> You're just gonna go around all of your loops, threading that working yarn through each one. And then as you go, you'll kind of like smush them together so that we're closing up the top of this pillow. And you can see it's already starting to make that closure. So around and around and around until you're done. And now that you've closed up your top hole, you could leave your poof pillow just like this. I'm gonna manipulate the, you know, the polyfill in it, get it into a cute shape, sit on it, whatever. Now, it's interesting. I did more loops and you can obviously see this one's way tighter. I like the look. This is the more hand-knit, chunky blanket look. What I didn't like is I could see the polyfill. Now, this one I did extra, extra tight and it is just like, it's almost like a basketball. Cute, just a completely different look. Now, for this pillow, I didn't want it to be like a round ball. I kind of wanted to give it more of like a donut effect, I guess you could say. So the tighter you pull, you will see it almost creates like a button, which I think is so cute. This I would say I used two fingers for the loop to get the loops this big. Now, for this one, one finger and it's super duper duper tight. You know, this one matches Stacy's blanket exactly. Now, if you don't wanna do that, what I would do is I would take it through one of the little loopies here, tie a little knot and shove the knot in the hole. It's that easy. But because I think I wanna do like the little button effect, I take my finger and I kinda weasel it in through the polyfill and I find my hole on the bottom side and weasel that finger through until I made like a canyon in the polyfill where my fingers are touching. Then I take this, pretend my finger is a needle, and I shove it through until my other finger on the other side can grab it. I, I, I got it. <sighs> I've hooked it. And now I can pull this through. It's a little bit of polyfill, it's fine. And now I can kind of pull on it to create that little button effect, which I just think is cute. For a little accent pillow, it's so cute. I mean, look how cute that is. Aw, you're cute. Then just tie a couple knots here and then shove that back through. And obviously the more you fill it, the firmer the pillow. This one, I didn't fill as much and it has a little bit more squish to it. This one, I filled. It's never gonna not be a ball, but it's so cute. And I don't know if you know this, people on Etsy are selling these pillows 
for like $35 each. And we literally made one for $10. And it probably took us an hour. I know, I know. And who's not gonna want this cute little poof pillow? And I thought you could wrap it, lay out cellophane, and then put this in and roll it. And then, you know, tie the ends like candy. And that's how you could wrap this gift. Isn't that cute? Which one do you like best? The more open, wider weave or the little tighter weave? I do prefer this, but I just can't stand seeing the polyfill in it. Like, I've only made two. One and two. But there's probably a happy medium between like two fingers and one finger to get that perfect kind of loosey-goosey, chunky knit weave as opposed to this tight little ball. Although I do like this tight little ball. It's a perfect accent pillow. I'm not giving these to anybody. I'm keeping them and they're gonna go on my bed because I think they're darling. $10 each and an hour's worth of time and you've got another Christmas. Okay, so now we are on to our third and final affordable, super easy, super quick DIY for the holidays. All you're gonna need are these crates, which I found at the Joann's. They are readily available. I'm sure Hobby Lobby has them. I got two different sizes, a small and a big one. The big one does have a divider in it. You're gonna need some rope from the Dollar Tree and you're gonna need some Cricut vinyl or some sort of a stencil or maybe some stickers that you got at the Dollar Tree so that you could spell out whatever it is that you wanna spell out on the front of your box, be it Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Seasons Greetings, Santa Claus, whatever. If you don't have a Cricut, you can still do this DIY. It's still gonna be quick. It's still gonna be easy. It's still gonna be affordable. You're also going to want to get some paint. Maybe you have some leftover paint in your garage. I know I do, and that's what I'm gonna be using. You could get paint from the Dollar Tree if you don't have any paint, because I don't think that it needs to be like super full coverage. We you just want to give it a wash of color. So if you don't have paint, grab some from the Dollar Tree when you're picking up your rope. Now I got this softer rope. You know, they also have that brown kind of hemp looking twiny rope. This is going to be our rope handles so that we can really mimic the boxes that are super expensive from the Kirklands. You are going to need a tool and it is your drill and you're going to need a drill bit that is a little bit smaller than the thickness of your rope so that we can drill two holes in each side of the box and then thread our rope through and tie a knot. So for the boxes, this 11 inch one, regular price is $6.49, but I got it 50% off, so it only costs $3.24. And then the 18 inch crate, it was also 50% off, so it cost me $4.49. Nine bucks, six bucks, plus a dollar, plus you can get your Cricut vinyl at the Dollar Tree. You're not looking at a very expensive project. Now, some of you might be going, what would you even use these for? Well, a, you're giving them as a gift, so who cares what the gift receiver uses them for? But in my mind, this little box could be, you know, like your Christmas card holder, you could put treats in it, you could put a plant in it and have it be a centerpiece. In the larger box, I thought one of those cute, like mini Christmas trees in one side, and then this side to like house all of the Christmas cards that you receive, I thought that would be super cute. So. Who doesn't need a cute holiday crate? They can put whatever they want in it. So we need to get into this, but before we do that, we have a special surprise. Our friends at Lumeri sent me another light to test. What is interesting about this light is, to me it looks very shop lighty. It is the Lumeri Smart UFO LED High Bay Light. It's 150 watts and it does go from warm white to cool white. Now, if you remember, Lumeri was the company that sent me those really cool steak lights. I used them at Halloween to illuminate my spooky cemetery. Well, you would think a light like this requires us to do some electrical, but I don't think it does. 
I literally think it runs by a plug. So we can hang it wherever we want, plug it into the nearest outlet, and then turn it off and on with the remote control. Isn't that so cool? I thought it was super cool. Lumeri has been reaching out to me a lot and wanting to send me other lights to test. And you know, I have the rule where you get one full dedicated video for free, basically, in exchange for product that you send me. After that, if you want me to test something else, then we really need to discuss, you know, a sponsorship, a paid ad, that sort of thing. So I was telling Lumeria that, and they said, you know, what I always hear. Unfortunately, it's not in our budget to do that. I really, really liked those steak lights. So I said, okay, because I really do like your products and I'm very interested in this UFO light, I would be willing to place it in a video, not a dedicated video, but in a video, if you guys agreed to give a discount to my subscribers. And they said they would. I will put it in the description box below, but if you want to receive 10% off on any lighting from Lumeri's website, you will use Lumeri, H is in Henry, B as in boy, 10. And it says here that the discount code is valid from December 20th to January 20th is what it looks like. But they also put PM. They can't be meaning that it's only available for an hour. It can't. And an hour from when? On what day? It has to mean it's valid for a month. Either way, we can get 10% off if we want to buy something from Lumeri's website. Okay, so let's quickly go over the details of this UFO light that we are going to be testing. It boasts a range of exceptional features, including smart control, seamlessly manage and customize lighting preferences through our user-friendly mobile app, offering unparalleled convenience and flexibility. Energy efficiency. Our high bay light ensures energy savings without compromising on illumination quality. Built to last, our product is resistant to impact, weather, and coercion, making it ideal for a variety of environments. Tailor the brightness and color temperature to suit different working conditions, enhancing productivity and comfort. Well, that all sounds great. Woo! This light is not cheap. It is $159.99. My goodness, it's not cheap, guys. So yeah, if we like this light, or I'm telling you, those little steak lights, I put them in my yard for Christmas, and I put it on like rainbow Christmassy, like do 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 and now I have dancing colors on the front side of my house. Those steak lights, they're kind of amazing. I'm just saying, 10% off code. Whether it be for an hour or a month, we have a code. I wanna use this light in my garage, but I was thinking if it worked and it's as easy as everything claims, if you have like a pantry with no overhead lighting or maybe a closet with no overhead lighting, but there was a plug nearby to where you could hang it and then maybe run like an extension cord like down into the plug, this could be perfect. Let's go to the garage, because we're gonna have to go into the garage anyways, because we need to drill some holes and paint some crates. Let's get this light hung in the garage. It should be a snap. It's like hang, plug, done. Oh, here it is. We have our instruction book, put that right there. Oh, I was right, see? It goes just with a plug. I love that idea. Packaged very nicely, very safe. And then we have our light here <laughs> oh because right now you know garage lighting it's not all that great i have like one light bulb and then there is a window but the sun doesn't come in on that side so really it's just like kind of pointless other than that light bulb i have the light that comes on when you open and close your garage so for the most part you guys know diys in the garage they're pretty dark so i'm hoping this helps i hope it sheds a little light on my future diy I'm the funniest person I know. Ooh, we got a hook situation. A uh, light bulb, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Oh, I was gonna say, I thought this came with a remote, and yep, it does. It's right here. So, yay. And they also sent 
this. This says Lumeri Zigbee and BLE Mesh Mini Bulb. I don't know what that is, so let's open it up. It looks like this. I don't I don't know what this is. There's more. There's like a charger. I thought it would go with this light, but I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's just charging over there and just a red light and a blue light went on. I have no idea. Maybe this is something to do with like the app so you can control all your lights. I don't really know, but I want to hang this other light here. So I'm trying to look up in the rafters of my garage to see where I'd be able to hang this. I am fortunate because I do have electrical. I have plugs in my roof. You guys might too. I feel like it's for your garage door. I just don't know where I can hang it from. The birds are loud today. So I don't know. Enjoy their sweet, sweet chirping. But this is the plug where I wanted to plug it this cord into, but see how I only have rafters right here? Then I was looking around my garage and I have some like bicycle hooks that were left over. So I'm thinking if I unscrew one of those and screw it right here, then I'll be able to hang this from one of those bicycle hooks. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, my hook's up. All I need to do is put this onto this, like so. It's a really long screw, I'm sorry. Whew. Plug that into that. Now we have that light bulb thing. I guess this just screws in. Hmm. I mean, the directions probably would help here. It seems like it should go more, but it doesn't. All right, let's get the remote. There's a power. There's a pair button. Numbers, let's just see if this works. No. Uh, do I have to get the directions? Hmm. All right, let me figure it out. Uh. You should just be able to press a power button. That's all I'm saying. Okay, that was a shit show. It took me 80 million years and it was all because of this. Remember when I was like, oh, that's weird. It's not screwing all the way in. Well, the white thing that was on top of it was like a plastic piece that needed to be removed so the prongs could fit inside. And then in order to pair the remote, with the light, you had to download the Lumeri app and then get this light onto the app in order to pair the remote. I don't know, but whatever. I've got it working now. Look. Oh, wow, it is bright. It is a bright. And I think we can control like the dimness. I don't know what three. Oh, oh, there's so many bright lights. It's so bright. It's so bright. But yeah, it works. It's, it's like I'm standing on the sun right now. But yeah, look at it. Point of the story is, it works. Okay, I know this video is not about this lighting. I will say I wish the remote control would just work with the light when you plug it in and you wouldn't have to do all of the whole app situation and download and find the device and be next to a router and all that stuff. I wish that you could just do without the app. That's my thing. But now that I have it and I have those steak lights, I can pair the steak lights with this remote as well, I think. I'm not quite sure. I don't know why I would want to do that, but I'm just excited that the light works with the remote. So I can always keep the remote out in the garage. And then when I come out here, I could just turn it on and have it be bright. But what I want to do is a little experiment and we're going to turn it off and I'm going to close my garage door. We're going to see how dark it is in my garage without any light. And then I'm going to turn it on. And we're going to see how bright my garage is. Okay. So I close my garage door. There's no light on. The light that you see over in this area is just coming through the window, even though I have the curtains closed. So now I'm going to stand back here. My eyes are still adjusting because of the brightness of this light. So I'm back here now and I'm gonna turn this on and we're gonna see how light it gets in here. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, it is so bright. It is so bright, you guys. Can you see how bright it is? I can now do DIYs in the garage in the night with my garage door closed so none of my neighbors bug me. That's kind of amazing. Okay, good. Now that we got that all figured out, yay, Lumeri for the UFO light. It works great. I just, I mean, sometimes, don't you just feel like we're a little bit too, like, high tech for our own good? Like, is it really necessary to make me download an app and, like, find devices? And that little 
white thing was something that needed to be downloaded to do, you know, sometimes, can I just like use a remote and turn it on and turn it off? That's all I want. But they do have a lot of like smart devices, a ton. And I guess if you have like a million of them, you don't want a million remotes. You can control everything from your phone. So, I mean, I guess that's fine. But again, sometimes it's like, just give me an on off switch, man. Let's make it easy. So. Anyways, Lumeri Light, thank you for sending it to me. I do dig it. The light is very, very, very bright. Do not look directly into the light, Carol Ann, because your eyes will still be seeing spots. So now that we have that up, let's get our third and final holiday DIY done right now. Okay, now that we have our boxes outside, you just need to determine where you want your rope handles to go. So I went ahead and measured one inch down from the top and then an inch and a quarter in from either side. And I've made little marks on each side of my crates. So I have my drill bit. I don't want it to be too terribly big, but it's the biggest one that I didn't need to search for. So hopefully it's big enough to thread our rope through because this is what I'm using. And so all we really need to do is go into our marks and drill two holes, two holes, two holes, two holes. Very, very easy. And try to drill straight. That's a pretty tiny hole. I don't know if my rope's gonna go through it. You know, if I tighten up the rope like a shoelace, I think that'll be fine. We'll be able to do it. Don't you worry. And then once we have our holes drilled, then we can paint. Yay. Two holes, let me do the rest. Okay, so now that we have our holes, we want to paint. You could pick whatever paint you want. You could leave them natural if you want. It's up to you. But I have that red paint that Stacy used on her cornhole boards, but I didn't want these to be super solid -y. So what I did is I just put, I don't know, that much water in, and then I poured some red paint to give it more of like a stain, kind of a wash feel. We'll see what that looks like. I have my disposable gloves so that I don't get red paint all over my hands. I know, aren't you impressed? I just have an old cut up t-shirt that I cut up and I'm gonna dip it in and I'm gonna rub this on and we'll see what we think about it, but I think it's gonna be good. So, Ooh, yeah, see, we're just giving it. Now, I don't want it to look pink. I do want it to look red, kind of like antique vintagey vintage-y feel, and it's gonna dry faster. I think I like this. I think I like it. Yes, yes, yes. I was contemplating not doing the inside, but I think I'm gonna have to do the inside. All right, I'm gonna do these, and then our final step is putting our decal on. Yay! Okay, oh, I was having cricket issues, but Everything's fine now. So our boxes are painted and dry and they look super cute. And I just went onto my Cricut and I just picked a font and wrote the words Merry Christmas. So I'm gonna put Merry on this top slat and Christmas on the bottom on both of them. And then all we have to do after that is put our rope handles in here. I already cut the lengths of my rope. I put tape on either end so that we can shoelace them through the holes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So Merry Christmas. Oh my God, it's gonna look so cute. All right, so that looks real good. Okay, Merry, boom, boom, that looks good. Yeah, that's good. Now let's rub it down. Now, I did purchase the Cricut Glossy Permanent Vinyl, so hopefully it is what it says it is. Oh, and the font I picked was called Christmas, just in case you wanna do the same font. Aha! Yay! Oh my gosh, it looks so good! Aha! <gasps> oh, come on now, come on! Look at how cute! What's even gonna make it cuter is we're gonna stick these little ropes in here. I was thinking we could staple gun them to avoid having to tie knots, but we might have to tie knots. But look, come on now, so cute. Let me trial and error the handle situation and I'll let you know what I did. Okay, <laughs> they're done and they look so cute. And the best course of action for the rope handles I decided was hot glue. This rope that I picked from the Dollar Tree is pretty thick, so tying a knot was pretty hard. And then I couldn't get my staple gun in here the right way in order to staple gun it, I'm sure. Maybe you could finagle it, but I wanted them to match up. So what I did is I just 
hot glued it. I just hot glued it. And then any of the frays, I just kind of lifted up a little fray and hot glued that down. And look how cute! I love them. And can you believe the Kirkland's regular price wanted like $54 for this set? And on sale, they want $34 for this set? I mean, $10, $10. Dunzo. So you could either give them as a matching set or you could divide them out and give one to one person and one to another person. They look so cute. I can't even. I can't even. So yay! There you have it and there it is. Three super easy, super affordable, and super quick DIY holiday gifts that you can make in a flash. I mean, the longest actually was the letters. These probably took about two hours each. The C, probably a little less time. The boxes, super quick. Slap on a coat of paint. And I was thinking, if you didn't wanna mess with the drilling of the handles, don't put handles on. Just paint the box, crick it on a seine, and you're done. The pillows, they were about an hour each. And all of the gifts are like right around 11 bucks, full price. I mean, use a coupon, get stuff on sale, and it'll even be cheaper than that. And no one's gonna know, no one's gonna know. Everything here looks like we paid top dollar, and we didn't, we didn't, and we didn't even spend that much time on it. I, if any one of my friends, neighbors, coworkers, what have you, gave me any one of these items as a Christmas gift, I would be over the moon. They're all very darling. So if you are in need of a last minute holiday gift for, like I said, your neighbor, coworker, brother, sisters, cousins, girlfriend, I've got you. I've got you covered. You have plenty of time. All of the supplies are readily available. You do not have to hunt around. Run over to your Dollar Tree and your local craft store and you can pick everything up for super, super cheap. And then just run home spend a couple hours and you're done. So if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out, which is every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Also, a big thank you to Lumeri for sending us that really cool UFO shop light. And if you guys are interested in any of the Lumeri products, I will leave the discount code in the description box below. And all I want you to do is in the comments below, let me know which one of these super affordable, super cute, super quick holiday DIYs you are going to make for one of your friends, family member, neighbor, coworker, whoever, I wanna know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for hanging out.